What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space. We've got Anthony Nader over here. He woke up like this. What's up, Anthony? How you doing? What's up, Chief? Man, I, you know, I didn't know you were coming over, but now that you're over, let me uh, show you some things. This is my lab. And I was just in the middle of something. Do you mind if I teach something today? You know, yeah. I think I think I think we were gonna we were gonna do something with with some cocktails and beverages, right? Oh goodness, I forgot, but I was already doing that. So let's just ah, let's do it. Excellent, excellent. So uh, if you were unaware, obviously Anthony is back. He's a he's a resident B and H virtual event spacer as well as event spacer in person too. Uh, but he's gonna be talking about styling cocktails and other beverages inside the studio today. So he's got a lot planned for you. You know the deal. If you're joining us here on Zoom, use the Q and A tab to drop any questions you may have for him. And if you're coming to us live from live stream or Facebook. Use the comment section and we'll get them over to Anthony as they come. But otherwise, Anthony, I know you're always trying to squeeze it in at that last minute and get it right on time. So I don't want to take any more of it. Thanks for being here and uh, do your thing, man. Do your thing, man. Thank you for having me. What's going on, world? Wherever you are, New Zealand, Ireland, hopefully these places from a far off land and watching this, uh, you see me dealing a lot in photography and today we are dealing in styling, which when you begin food photography, it's not the most important thing, but after a while, when you've mastered a few things, it really matters. And then after a while, you get a stylist to do it for you. And I'm kind of in a place, in an, in an in-between place. I've been, in the past two years, hired to style for Grey Goose and Hype Beast from Japan in New York, which... That makes sense. I just wanted to say Japan because that's what was on the paycheck. Anyways, um, uh, since I, I food styled for Walmart and Nestle and a lot of my own shoots, but that's food stuff. Some is drink, but we're dealing in food. Uh, we're dealing in drinks today, by the way. So no food today. I don't know who's going to teach food because that's a lot. That's a heap. Um, so the number one question I get all the time, by the way, this is... <laughs> Come here, come here. Stop opening the bottle of wine. Come here. This is Samantha Mihu, and she is uh, my assistant, soon to be my editor. Uh, we're working closely together. Uh, Samantha's a great fit for having on this uh, class because she has a lot of bartending experience. She's from Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. And um, yeah, do you want to say something? Hello? I was basically. You're my assistant for the introduction. Um, yeah, I've been a bartender for about 15 years, been styling for shoots for about on and off about eight. So it's been a minute. So we're going to teach you all the tips and tricks for how to style the best drinks. Yeah, that's right. And um, she fought a tiger before coming here, but thankfully we threw a, a chef coat on her. <laughs> um, we're going to start with glassware. It's important to know if you're on a bartender photo shoot or at a bar about glassware, what it's called, how to handle it um, so that you don't get fingerprints on it before the photo shoot, things like that. So we'll start with kinds of glassware and then I'll show you how to handle it. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so first up is, I guess the most common, a rocks glass. It kind of looks like a little bit rectangular by the side. It is a circular glass, there are square glasses. This is usually for a rock, rocks glass, okay? This would hold your neat pours with or without ice. Plenty of um, classic cocktails come in here, but if you need a glass that looks like this, it's called a rocks glass. Next up, a Collins glass. This is a little big, but this is a Collins glass. It is your, I mean, sometimes rum and cokes are, are poured in here, but like vodka sodas, things like that, uh, one in ones, which is like part spirit, part uh, non spirit. Uh, this, the way I remember this is I live in Miami Beach. Collins Avenue is, is a long avenue, so it's a long glass. Collins at glass. And by the way, if you already know about this, listen anyways, because I was on a bartender shoot um, just a month ago, and the girl had been bartending you know, I don't know, like four years. And I'm like, you know, someone said, can you put in a Collins glass? And she's like, she goes to me, what's a Collins glass? And I'm like, 
we need to know this because some bartenders uh, only deal in plastic cups and they don't make plastic cups in these shapes yet. But we're classy. So Collins glass, rocks glass, Collins glass. Um, this is a broken glass. Notice the brokenness of it. So my mom broke one of my Collins glasses and she was going to throw everything away. And I said, wait, I will keep it because if in a photo shoot, I need a broken glass, this is perfect. And I have all the shards in there. So we will use that in the future. Um, I can't imagine when, but this is, this is, uh, there's something to say about sustainability, right? If you break a glass and it's kind of presentable, you can use it in a photo shoot. Like, whoa, this drink was so good. Boom. Like, you know, you pour everything in here and then on Photoshop, you suspend the pieces of glass that actually came from it. So they make sense. I don't know. Or if someone breaks into your house and you're in the kitchen, this is in your right hand. This is an enormous wine glass, but it's also, what would you call this for a spritz? You put it in a wine glass also, but even if it's bigger, it's just a, a goblet. A goblet, wine glass, goblet. So this is a regular sized wine glass meant to hold uh, five ounces of wine. Uh, this is much bigger. This is for Aperol spritzes, but they're both referred to as wine glasses. Um, next. This is a, let me put that broken one way back there. Oh, by the way, I brought this up, went out just to put it around. This is a super Collins glass or a flower vase for one flower. <laughs> I just found this, we could put a flower in it, but this is nothing. This is like a quadruple shot or something. This is a footed pint glass, footed pint glass. So a pint glass holds beer usually, but this will hold the same amount of beer, probably 12 ounces, a little bit less. This is footed. So when you have some restaurants have a footed Collins glass, it's because it's got a foot on it. So this is footed pint glass. Okay. Samantha, which is this one? It's a Nick and Nora. A who? <laughs> Who's Nick? Who's Nora? You don't have a chair? I'm doing Danny burns more calories. It's okay, like she wants to be off camera. This is a <laughs> Nick and Nora. For reasons I have not researched yet. So someone on the chat, you want to tell us who Nick and Nora were. But this is not quite, this is much smaller than a regular wine glass. And this is not quite, this is, what kind of snifter is this? Just a snifter. But there's more oh, shapes of a snifter. This is uh, you can have a wider snifter with a smaller, which are better for ports. This is better for like a scotch or a whiskey. Yeah. Um, but they're all just snifters essentially. Okay, so this would be a snifter. I have another uh, example of a snifter, but this is like a wine glass and the snifter had a baby and this is, well, technically then this is Nick and this is Nora and this is the Nick and Nora, right? The reason you use Nick and Nora is, dead, is because when you're certain drinks, when you're making it, the surface area in a coupe is too large. So the aromatics are going to be different. So you put it in a Nick and Nora because the surface area when someone goes to drink it is smaller. That's where you Kurt, can you reach for a coupe while I keep going through this? That's the only one I didn't bring out. Um, this would be your quintessential margarita glass. Uh, it's got ridges. This is really stylized, but really you could put a margarita glass, uh, margarita in anything. Um, this is a, a martini glass for martinis. This is by Grey Goose. It's got the Grey Goose logo right there, but this is Shape like that. If you've ever had a martini, they're super hard to walk around with unless you drink a lot of it. Um, what else? Oh, we have a chalice. We have a beer chalice. This is from Stella Artois. Okay. But it's a beer chalice, much like a footed glass, but probably somewhere in Europe, someone's like footed. We don't do footed it's a chalice. It's very important for you guys to know this. Um, I don't have a coop. No, but essentially, it I think I have a coop. I definitely have a coupe that's like from CB2. Careful with your head. Uh, it's probably on the top shelf, but if you don't find it, it's fine. It's so important for you guys to know what glassware it is. The other day I saw a guy's website, great food photographer. He had put, he, he shot a burger and he put the burger right after the top bun and then built the rest of the burger under it. And I was like, this is a great shot of a bad, badly built burger. So you wouldn't put your margarita in a footed pint glass. You wouldn't put wine in a rocks glass. So this is why I'm going over this with you guys. 
because different glasses serve different uh, purposes and hold different uh, volumes. This is a julep glass uh, made famous by the Kentucky Derby, usually made with bourbon. Um, this is a julep glass. And you guys know what a mule mug is. This, I have no idea that this is, but I found it on Lincoln Road. There's so much glassware you can deal with. Um, and finding the right glassware for the job you're doing is essential. And knowing your secondary glassware, like, you know, if you don't have a rocks glass, what, what do you put the, the Negroni in, you know? What would you put a Negroni in if you didn't have a rocks glass from these things? So I, if I didn't have a rocks glass, in theory, oh, from these, that's a trick question. I would use a, one of, like, the fat round snifters. Yeah. Two by two would still fit. And the ice cube will fit in there. The height of the glass is still the same. Yeah, exactly. So on photo shoots, sometimes you'll run out of glassware and, and you'll need seconds, but it a lot of so as a professional, I shoot to the specs of bartenders. You know, I don't I go beyond what the client's gonna see. I go to where the bartender it makes sense to a professional bartender. And uh, in part because I'll be made fun of for it, but also I want brand work and I don't want to be doing things wrong. You know, if Aperol Spritz is going to hire me and they're like, wow, you shot Aperol Spritzes in the Collins class, it's insane. Why would you do that? Then, you know, you got to answer to the Aperol gods. Um, glass handling. Let's get into that. So on set, okay, we would have clean glassware and glassware is cleaned by a microfiber uh, fabric towel. This one's enormous. I'm not going to open it up, but please make sure all your watermarks are off of it. Here's a trick at bars. They have dishwashers, uh, machines, pull all the glassware out. Once it's done, the, that water is super hot. And if it air dries, it's going to dry really well without any spots or minimal spots, but pretend this is polished and cleaned and no one's touched it. We use Go ahead, poke another hole in one of my gloves. Come on down. We use gloves to handle cocktails. And in that case, you can handle it any which way you would like. In theory, in theory you would hold it like this if the glass is empty. Yeah. Or like so. No one's going to drink out of these drinks that you're shooting because we're, we're going to handle them a lot. So we would put our hand on top of it and run it to wherever we need to. This is good. This is good. I'm going to take all this ice out. This is your, this is your drink. We would move it around like this ever so slightly. If we needed to pick it up off of a surface, we would move this. Thing. Okay. Off of the surface, you just slide it to the edge of a table and hold the bottom. And like, so we move all kinds of glassware. Okay or the stem is acceptable if the stem is not too thick we don't want to we don't want to photoshop fingerprints it's almost impossible that's why we're doing this now when a cocktail has a cocktail in it right it's got a cocktail in it so you don't want to move it much at all so you're going to do this obviously if the glass is empty but polished and you don't have gloves and you need to move it you put your hand in, you expand your hand, and you can do this, but you're not going to do that when it has liquid. Of course, you're going to always run it like this. If you do this, your fingers have grease, and it's going to stain the glassware. Not only that, but if the glassware is condensated because it's wet, your grease is going to create a shape of, of where your finger was. Okay, so we never touch a glass where it's condensated. Usually we have a wash line. Would you like to take over the wash line part? But then let me put the camera on you. So what a wash line would be, I'm sure some of you would know this, is when you fill a cocktail up, obviously there's oils in liquor and they're going to create what would be called a wash line. So if you shake it around, you're going to see when we do wine, it's going to rise and fall and you're going to get what's called legs. Legs are, occur in wine, legs occur in liquor. The thickness of the legs all depends on what you're moving, but either way, you're going to see a residue of a line. So if I have liquid in here and I shake it around while moving it, and even if I think I'm very careful, I promise you're not. So when you go to shoot it, you're going to see a wash line, and then you're going to see the real wash line. So you're going to yeah. have to Photoshop out all of that extra liquid in that little minuscule line. Um, 
Secondly, wash lines are super important for bartender. Like he said, if he puts something out and I work for a brand and I would say, oh, that's not what that drink should look like. That's not the glass where it should be in. Wash lines are something bartenders, bar industry look for. So don't be sending me a margarita that's filled to the very top with salt on it. Now all the salt's in the cup. To meniscus. The meniscus needs to be lower. It can't be too We don't high. need meniscus here. Wash lines matter a lot when you're pouring wine. Um, a lot of brands will worry about if I'm pouring and the wash line is too high, the implication is I'm over serving. And that is not something you want to be saying from a brand standpoint. So you need to be very careful, one, of what you're pouring, especially with neat pours and rock pours. And secondly, just for, I guess, notoriety and, and accolades, right, and, and consistency, you want to make sure yeah. that your wash lines aren't looking crazy. So your friends don't pick on you. Yeah. <laughs> also, you would you would get a cocktail that has a high wash line because it's dead, because there's ice, you know, when you build the cocktail, there's ice sticking out of you know the, the the top level of the liquid but once that melts things go up just like what's happening now with the glaciers because we're not doing enough um it'll go and so it it's like oh it's a dead cocktail or you over wow i just uh i just kicked it yeah that's okay that's okay that's okay i just kicked the camera no it's fine i got you know i'm brazilian so my feet work like my hands um Okay, sweet deal. This this is such an interesting topic because so many things overlap each other. Um, why don't you pour a glass of wine so we can show what legs are while I show you guys what you do to avoid moving the glass and therefore whatever's on the top layer of that cocktail sticking to the glass and making it look nasty and you have to get a Q-tip and clean it, which Q-tips are always a part of my toolkit. What would we do? So. We're going to shoot a cocktail. We put it where it's supposed to be. We ice it. We're going to go over ice soon. And what we do is we get a funnel and we put it to the bottom or to where the ice is. Let's say this is real ice. We put it here and then we pour our drink here so that it doesn't splash all over your polished surface area. This is, of course, a funnel. You can get it anywhere you'd like. But we do this specifically because we don't want Stuff. We want to get it right in camera. Now, is it really important, men? Do you really have to use a funnel? Yes. I'm going to tell you why. With cocktails that are spirit forward, like Negronis, you're going to get legs because of the liquor only. But if you have a cocktail that has a foam top, right? Foam on top, and you move it around, that foam is going to be foamed out, and you're not going to see a beautiful, clean rim. If the foam has something like Tahin on it, you have a real problem because now you have tahin quite literally melting over the inside of it. And to clean that is such a pain. Why don't you just pour it with the freaking uh, funnel, bro? Why don't you just like listen the first time? But that's okay because we're all going to make these mistakes anyways. And then we're going to remember I told you and it's going to sink in better. So, legs. All right, legs. So, Spirits have a viscosity, meaning they're thicker than water. So what happens is this is a, you know, a regular wine glass. And then if we do this, we do this. Can we see the legs here? Huh. Let me, let me get my cell phone light. So if I thought I was being really slick and moving this, right? Even when I think I'm not moving it. There's yeah, still there's some legs movement. right there. I saw some legs. So. Let's see. Wow, this is a if dirty glass. you see glass. this ridge right here. Oh, how again. do we hit it with the lights to show the legs? Let's scroll them. I think liquor might be easier because the legs are thicker. Can you see it? Uh, a little bit right here. Can you guys see the legs? So the liquor will literally grab onto the inside of the glass and then drip down. And since two drips look like legs, you get legs over everything. Vodka is viscous. That's why I don't fake um, cocktail photo shoots with water replacing vodka because when you pour it at a distance, water starts to break up like a, you know, like, like beads of water where vodka will, it's so viscous, it'll be just a straight line. And I can tell in, in cocktail photo shoots when it's water or not. Um, and there's different ways to thicken up water, like actually using vodka. So those are legs. Okay, we don't want legs, so we run our cocktails 
as such. Oh, so much more legs. Okay, so many more legs. There you go. You guys see this line right up here? That is legs. So I'm going to go to the edge and go back. That's a high leg. That's a high leg. This is, yeah, this is a cheerleader over here. Oh, legs. You see the droplets right on my face? Those are legs. You see, liquor is viscous and water's not. So we don't want legs. We don't want to Photoshop legs. Liquor companies who pay the bills don't like legs. No one likes legs, except when you're drinking it. I don't know what you pour. All right, so we run cocktails like this. We put it where it's supposed to be. We uh, use a funnel, okay? Um, we use chilled liquid. We get we get the liquid we're using, even if it's not the actual liquid. We, we chill it with ice, and then we pour it in because we want some condensation. Yeah. That's the next one, turkey basters. So if you guys go to, I don't think b &H has this kit yet. It's very sophisticated. You guys go on amazon.com. Yeah. Tell us again, Sam. It's Mantha. Oh. <laughs> and Mantha, she hates Sam. Don't okay. do it. Uh, you can buy all of these beautiful tools in a, you probably didn't guess it, aquarium kit. Yeah, so if you have fish and stuff, you got to do stuff with the turkey baster and go all the way down the tank or whatever. This works perfectly for cocktails. So let's say this cocktail's here, we shot it, but we want it over there. Instead of grabbing the cocktail and making legs, we would squeeze the end of this, suck the liquid out to the bottom, grab the glassware like this, run it to the other place, and then squeeze it back out or with the help of the funnel so we don't get legs again. This is how we save time, we uh, improve quality, and we get paid more per hour because we know things like this because we watch uh, classes like this, okay? So if another, not, do what you want. If what's not, another reason you you've used a coffee waster? <laughs> oh, glad you asked. Yeah, <laughs> why don't you tell us? So if you overfill something like a rocks glass, um, you, you know, you want it perfect two ounces, and you're free pouring and you go too high or on the wine glass for consistency, you can't over pour. This is a really good way. If the glass is polished, you poured it in with the funnel. You don't want to have to take it all out and do it again. You can suck it out. Show us. Very, oh, yeah, just don't over your eyes. You're mm -hmm. very careful. Apparently, I poured a lot too much. I can then transfer into here. I can take this away. And now you have the perfect amount right. in there. To the wash line. Or you can control how much is actually going in by seeing how much it is and then stopping, right? Correct. You don't have to pour everything that's coming from your original vessel that you're pouring in. So uh, that was a lot of information. We're going to keep going at light speed. However, do we have any questions? I don't have the chat open. So far, so far, nobody's chimed in with any questions. I think everybody's clear on at least what legs are. Uh, I think I think we got that squared away. Uh, but, you know, anybody who joined us late, uh, maybe you missed that part of the intro. But remember, Anthony's here and he's willing to take any questions. So if you do have questions about this stuff, make sure you get them in. He loves the questions and we love to get them answered. So. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Samantha, can you get a flat plate with tahini for me? We're, it's about to be uh, egg time after after this ice moment. So ice, ice melts. Ice is frozen water and becomes water, especially in Miami, very quickly. Um, oh, before that, before that, I, I feel like everyone knows this trick, but we're gonna we're just gonna show them. Show, uh, pass me the glycerin bottle. Thank you, sugar pie. So with the rocks glass, oh yeah, it's gone. Um, it's okay. Collins glass. So no, this is the museum blue. I got you. It's right here. Boom, boom, boom. All good. So Anthony, go while you're while you're getting that set up, uh, we did have Vanessa. Vanessa popped into the chat over here and wanted to know: Do you always take your own ice cubes? I do not. I'm at a honestly, I'm at a price point and a a a standard where I I do bring my ice most of the time um, because I have so many options now. Now, if it's an ice company, they want you to shoot with their ice, right? Um, but mostly I do, yeah. It saves me a lot of time and now I've explored products 
which I'm about to share with you, um, that really get the job done in terms of ice, okay? Um, so yeah, now I do. I roll with ice now, for sure. Um, okay, so ice melts. What are the what are the options we have for ice? Well, can you pass me? I don't know what the big fake ice is, but yeah, I I can use this. Pass me the little. Oh yeah, pass me the little bottles. Of the, the the rocks right here. No, the rocks right here. Those. Yeah. So. What are what are the the options with ice? Oh yeah, that's right. Before I do that, uh, vegetable glycerin. You mix fifty percent of this and water, and you get a fifty fifty glycerin mixture. And then when you just spray this onto glassware, you guys see it's clean. I'm just gonna do one spray. It looks wet, and it'll stay wet for a long time. And these drops won't move at all for days unless you touch it. That's why we run glassware like this, because if you put your finger on it, you're gonna smudge it. You guys see that? I smudged it with glycerin. So that's how we make things look wet. Um, I can hear it already. Somebody's saying, man, you forgot the part where you could go to Home Depot and get a misting spray and make things look cold. I don't believe in that. I don't like that. Um, cold glassware looks like cold glassware when it is cold glassware, okay? I don't like the idea of having to go outside and taping off my glassware and spraying it and bringing it back inside and then having to wash the glassware. Whose glassware is it? Is it yours? Is it special glassware from someone else's? Are you really gonna spray that with mist? It's up to you. Daddy doesn't do it, okay? And I get by, okay? So it's fine. Glycerin, vegetable glycerin mixed with water. This is half and half, spray this. The farther away you get, the smaller the, the water molecules are going to look. The closer you get, the bigger water molecules it is. Um, sometimes we don't even make things cold at all. We just spray this on it, and it gets the job done. Sometimes, or other all other times, I keep the actual product cold. Like if it's an RTD, which is like a hard seltzer or something in a can, I actually have it cold. Or um, what else do we do? We chill the glass. So... You take a flight to Miami, you go to Flanagan's, you go back home with a green glass from Flanagan's, right? And then you get your Collins glass, okay? And you put it in here or a big glass and you get cold water and you fill it between the glassware and the cup to where you want your glass to be chilled. You fill it with ice cold water. And then when you're ready, you pull it out with a glove. And now the glass is cold for a while. And then you put your liquid and do your thing. And you got like, I don't know, like eight minutes until you got to do it again. But all it is is doing this. Always have a backup cocktail. Now, we spent too much time on that, but shout out to Flanagan's, um, which is actually on the stock market. I don't know why. Anyways, real ice is dope, but it melts. So when I lived in New York City, I was like, wow, I need fake ice for this doer's photo shoot. What, I'm gonna, what am I going to do? I go there to the set shop, great place, and I buy a masterfully made two by two, what is also known as a king cube made of acrylic. This is acrylic and it's perfect. It works really well with rocks glasses. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. I use this particular one all the time because each uh, each side of it, sometimes it's smaller, sometimes it's wider, sometimes it's shorter, depending on the glass I'm using. Um, it's always going to look perfect. Now, now, um, can you get me two regular glasses I can see through and fill them with uh, nothing? Uh, fill one with regular ice. Like rocks? No, actually, just, just two glasses. Two glasses, that's it. All right, so what if you're dealing in something that's sparkling? and you're using acrylic. So I went ahead and bought this one and I bought five of these and they were expensive. I'm not gonna tell you how much, you do your research, but they're really expensive, but they look really real. And here's a big problem I ran into. Okay, thank you so much. When I use acrylic ice, Bring one uh, from the fridge, uh, Perrier, please. There's that, and there's my silicone ice. So 
So there's, thank you so much. So there's a big difference between acrylic and silicone. And the big difference is, well, I'm showing you two differences right here. The big difference is acrylic doesn't float and it doesn't grab bubbles as well as silicone does. So silicone will actually float whilst acrylic will just sit at the bottom. Oh, the cheaper cubes are floating. There you go, that was another thing. So these really don't move and they don't have any leeway. If you put, you know, if you don't like the way your ice cubes are, they're not gonna mold to how you want them. Whereas silicone will actually float just like ice. I'm gonna let you guys see this. It looks like ice. Okay, so I really prefer silicone ice cubes over acrylic, except when I'm using this big cube, it just really doesn't serve me to have heavy acrylic ice that doesn't really grab bubbles well. You see that this is grabbing bubbles a lot more real than the other. Now, I did pour cold Perrier versus warm Perrier to also show you something. The bubbles on warm anything that's carbonated are bigger, and the bubbles on anything cold that's carbonated are smaller. Science, right? That's all I'm going to attribute it to. Um, so if you want actual, like, like good looking stuff, chill, chill your carbonation versus having it sitting in the sun because you're going to get huge ice cubes. And people that know know that this is kind of fake. So that's it with the Perrier. You can take a sip of that if you like. Why are you want? You've been working on it, okay? Um, silicone ice is dope. Silicone ice, look. It's squishy. We can also break it as we need to. It's great. I would never flush this down the toilet or throw it away or anything. That's why I keep it in my handy dandy cool whip container. Okay, all my fake ice. Um, and how did I get this? Well, there's a website that I currently, huh? What is that? Oh, that's separate. Yeah. Uh, thank you. There's a website that I currently forgot the name of that's not the set shop. It's something with a B. They sell silicone mixture and it's like 50% A, silicone A and 50% part B. And you mix them together and you have five minutes to pour it into a mold. And then you let it sit for two hours and then it comes out like this. So this came from an ice cube tray that held ice cubes this shape. I also made them to be half moons, much like you would get from a refrigerator because some of my photo shoots are meant to emulate household cocktails or household enjoyment of alcohol. And so I have fake ice that looks like household ice. I have fake ice that looks like this, anywhere in between. You can rough up the edges of silicone and it'll, it'll look uh, foggy just like this right? Instead of clear, we can mess with it. You guys getting this? This looks cold already. So this in particular, I have this size separate. It doesn't feel like the same mix, but I bought a slab of ice from the set shop in New York City. And that's, that's the website, the set shop. And you can, you can break down this ice to whatever shape you want. Again, it is, it's, it's silicone, you see it bounces around. Whoa, I almost spilled my drink. Uh, it bounces around. There's a lot of ways around using uh, real ice. I feel like we've spoken about ice a lot. Oh, one more thing. If you think you hack life by buying cheap Amazon ice, you are wrong. These cubes suck. First of all, the plastic is blue. So everything you shoot is naturally going to be blue. Um, they don't look that real. They're not polished. So the edges are rough and they're whatever, but they're cheap. They're like 12, 11 bucks. I think I bought this on Amazon, but I know I bought this at Michael's, but they also sell it on Amazon. I bought it to, you know, to research and to bring you guys the good news. So that's part of why you're taking a class with me is to save yourself the grief. Um, don't do this. Just skip to silicone. And it's a process to make silicone. If you're not down to make the ice, buy it from someone making the ice like me. Um, I'll sell you some ice. I'll mail it to you because it's, it's science and you got to ruin some things because it's silicone. It's not going to come off.
Anyways, we're going to move on from ice. So uh, we're going to just go to, just to clarify real quick on the on the silicone ice. Uh, Amelie wanted to just confirm. So you mix the silicone A and B before you pour it into the tray? Yeah, you you would pour it into like a quart container or something disposable, 50 percent, 50 percent, and then pour this into the tray and then let it set because you're always going to have uh, it's always going to get legs and stick to the edges. And once it gets to the bottom, it's gonna solidify. So it's gonna ruin, basically ruin whatever you're starting out with. Um, and so I have a dedicated pork container for that. And you would pour it into molds. And if your mold is already made of silicone, a lot of them are, there is a silicone spray that the same website has. I'm gonna get back to you guys with that. In, in fact, if you're watching this and you're that interested, DM me, I will send it to you. But um. Yeah, you pour half and half, fifty percent that. This is this is what it's called. Pretty sure that's not the only website that sells it, but that's where I got it. It's my cat's hair all over it. So that's part A, and this is part B. You guys see that? And this was honestly, this is about two hundred something dollars. These two quart, these two gallons. Is it two gallons? Feels like two gallons. Um, it's expensive, but I can make a lot of fake ice. And what's more expensive, forever ice or buying ice every shoe? I'll wait. That's rhetorical. Okay, cool, cool, good. We got it. All right. Any questions on ice, gang? That's, I nope. think I think that's that that about ice is enough. Oof. <laughs> Oof. You must be a dad with those dad jokes. That's that's correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, moving on. So now we have. Uh, can we get the? No. It's this is our cocktail now. Okay. We've polished it. We put fake ice in it. We're gonna make a drink. Okay. Well, here's my secret to making most of the drinks that are available anywhere. So um, soy sauce, when when it gets water, well, when you mix it with water, it becomes brown and different shades of brown, depending on how much soy sauce you put in. That can substitute all bourbons, um, all dark rums, all kinds of stuff. A little bit of soy sauce, a lot of soy sauce. And then my grenadine. My grenadine is red, so it can emulate Campari, it can emulate Negronis. Some uh, rums are red in tint, so you have some of this and some of this. But really, this is where I get my reds, and this is where I get my browns, and that's 80% of the cocktails out there. Anything else, you're really going to have to just get the bartender to make it. Um, so let's make a Negroni, which we're going to get to color first, and then we're going to shake it and then pour it. So, um, Use a jigger. We're not going to really need, need a jigger. We just need it to color, right? So, yeah, put some water in here. Yeah, from, oh, yeah. Oh, we're not done with ice. I can't believe I skipped this part. We got to go back. I'm sorry. I'm disorganized today. So, the set shop also sells stuff for you to make crushed ice and like uh like strawberry daiquiri ice this is silicone also and this is also a silicone you hear that oh yeah this stuff has lasted a whole week in my house um i'm gonna put it in a core container but i can i can make this stuff by buying trend groves Crystal ice mix. Okay, this is crystal ice mix. It's available at the set shop also. And this is ice powder. This is much smaller granules. This is larger granules. They sell them even bigger and then they make, they sell you the, the silicone uh, ice mix. Now, can you pass me that tray of yellow? I want to, I want to bring some real time results. So I did a shoot Last, like 10 days ago and then I let it all sit on the tray because the the product says if you let it dry you can use it forever and I'm like okay I want to let it dry 
Well, they shrunk back into the shape they were, plus they kept some of the liquid that was put into them during the shoot. So if you keep your stuff out long enough, it'll shrink. So that's all I wanted to say, <laughs> actually. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, they make all kinds of ice. Why would you like, you know, make a drink and have it die on you like in two seconds? Like it's, it's crazy. You can use fake stuff now. Um, just don't drink. I would never recommend that. Anyways, Samantha, can you get this on? Okay, perfect. Now, maybe this fiber, microfiber cloth. Can you start doing the mint part of it? I'm going to start mixing. Let's say Negroni's take mint today. I was going to say. Yeah, so uh, what we do is we're going to we're gonna get some water. Don't really worry. I'm not going to balloon it. Yeah, I was going to show you guys how to make that ice, but I just showed you already. Okay, cool. So this, can you bring a bottle of whiskey, anything for me? This is water. This is soy sauce. Yeah, water you can really get anywhere. Um, depending on where you are, and where your bathroom is, you just turn on the faucet and there it is. Okay. That's what we're trying to match. Yeah, so we're going to match some bullet rye or? That's the rye. That's the rye. Okay, cool. So, we get my soy sauce, of course. And if I pour too much soy sauce, I'll just add some more water. So we're trying to match this color. Beautiful. It's still a little light, but we're almost there. We don't want to pass the exit. Sorry for the sound. No, they love the sound. Metal and glass, my favorite. There you go. We have bullet rye. Yeah. Soy sauce and water, bullet rye. Very close. Very close. On shoot, you can't tell anything. Now, if we're going to make a Negroni, the recipe for a Negroni calls for one part gin, which is clear, one part sweet vermouth, which is actually darker than this. So we would put more soy sauce. I'm just going to make a Negroni. Sweet vermouth and one part Campari. So we'll put the grenadine. It's right here. Sorry. Now, a seasoned bartender is going to know what looks like a Negroni. I'm going to see a little bit. That's about it. A little bit more red. She's too brown. She's too brown. We can either add more water or more red. I'm going to go with more red because I don't know where the water is. Oh, it's getting there. It's close. It's close. There you go. I think that's good. Go. That looks like yeah. a Negroni. Perfect. Okay. So we'll get the microfiber. We're going to go all the way with you guys. Okay. We washed this cocktail. We've polished it up. Blah, blah, blah. Pull it right. It was over here. Okay. Acrylic ice cube here. Now you need to make sure that it is to spec. So if you made a Negroni, it's three ounces total. One ounce sweet vermouth, one ounce Campari, one ounce gin, plus dilution. So it's a little bit more. So, oh, actually these, yeah, these have the measuring things on them. Hit it, girl. It's like three, I don't know. So dilution is typically about 14% if you're trying to get really, really nerdy. Um, <laughs> between seven and 14 is fine. Or you can just add a little water and call it a day. So to be th fair. three ounces plus seven to 14% 14 14 of three. 14 is like the perfect Okay, amount. plus 14% of three ounces. So we're looking at, so, we're going to go, this is one ounce. Cause... Yeah, it's thick plastic in there. Hold on. You want my funnel? Let's funnel it out. This is actually what happens. You see, we're not getting any legs. This glass is clean. Perfect, no spillage, nothing like that. If we wanted the liquid cold, we would have chilled either the liquid or the glass. We, we would not, however, 
mix this liquid into anything else to make it cold, we'd put it in a Ziploc and then in an ice bath to make it cold so you don't mess with the color, okay? So this is three ounces. Uh, this is what it is. And would say, okay, this is to spec, Mr. Mr. Uh, product person. Then they're like, okay, cool. Let's shoot it. Or they'll say, maybe that's a little too high. Can we take away from that? And I would get Samantha and she would say, okay, no Absolutely. problemo. We're going to run this over the side of it. And maybe on top of it. And then... So cocktails have a wash line, but also you want to see some ice in there. Yeah, we should go a little further. Yeah, this we is could a, this go is, a little further. Maybe a double round. Something. Depending on the glass, of you course. You can see about. Yeah, that, that much. So I'm going to put this on a flat surface so you guys can see. If the ice cube pops out, protrudes. So it just pops out ever so slightly, and it's sexy, and you have a full glass. Oh yeah, I drink that, I drink that. That's how we do it. Um, what else is there? There's dealing with herbs. A food stylist needs to know how to wake herbs from dead. And today we have a guest star named Mint. Samantha, take this one. So there's a lot of different things you can do with mint. If you see it comes packaged very sadly like this, which means this is what's coming out. And this is not anything photograph worthy nor is it going to make anything I scoured the earth for that. But well, Publix? Grow your, your own uh, mint trees, okay? So when Samantha comes and styles your thing. I'm very I'm very specific. I'm very picky. I've also done this a long time and, and we need the drink to needs to make me want to drink it. So this isn't going to do it. A couple yeah. options you can do. So we can take, obviously we're going to take the bottom off the bunch because all we're going to need is a top. Um, if you were going to put it in a highball or a rocks glass, you would, you know, you could keep part of the stem, but you still want to um, pull the leaves off because if I get a drink and this is the garnish, it looks like I'm eating a salad. Yeah, it's not you don't want a salad to anybody. So you would want it to look like this. But this mint is sad. So what we would do, we have a couple options. Um, you might see some bartenders clap their mint. You can do this. I prefer hold it, smack it on your fingers. What you're doing right now is kind of waking it up and expressing the oils on the leaves because the whole point of mint or any herb essentially is when someone goes to drink a cocktail, they're nosing into the herbs and it's going to open their palate. So we can smack it a few times. This is a lot prettier than this guy. We can throw it into some water very quickly. We're not going to let it sit for too long, but this should open it up a little bit. If you want to blanch it, you can throw it in ice water quickly, pull it out. This is a good way to preserve your mint as well. So if you have some really good mint leaves, um, you can put it in some water and then when you take it out, put it on a damp paper cloth, uh, paper towel, sorry, and fold it up and keep the roots damp. And then you're going to use that the next day. I don't have a cloth here, so then I'm gonna Knowledge, shake, baby. Shake this off camera because I'm not trying to get this whole house. Mint it up. Not the worst thing that's happened in here. I had glitter once. What? My cat had glitter. Don't shoot glitter at home. <laughs> So we went from very sad to awake. Mint. It's Welcome awake. to the rock show. It has some nice coloring to it. I still would say if you are going to dip it in water, um, be careful not to leave it too long. It can weigh it down and then it gets even droopier. So there's like a fine line. Um, I would still take this. Splash zone. And <laughs> you sat too close. <laughs> and then that is a beautiful garnish for something like a mojito. Um, I mean, you could use this for anything. But so we're gonna we're gonna all right. So we're gonna use the pineapple juice to make a mocktail, and then you, we're gonna ice it, and you're gonna put the mint in it because so I I'm gonna get mint. slayed on the internet, and you are too for uh, garnishing a Negroni this way. But you but we're gonna get, get into. Slayed. I did not say to do that. There you go. You. So we have ten minutes left. We're gonna get into garnishes, but first the miracle of eggs. Okay, so you know when you go to. South Beach, right? And you get your, <laughs> you get your margarita, and they rim the glass. They get a lime, 
they get an exposed line wedge and go like this and then put salt on it and you have a salt rim. But for photography, that ain't gonna cut it. That's liquid, that's gonna slip off the face of the earth. So what we do is, yeah, I got it already. So we get a brush and we get eggs. Egg whites are like glue. Um, I used to work at a construction company and this lady, Cecilia, her son once was um, very young and he started breaking eggs on the floor. And as punishment, she told him to break an egg and put the egg all over his face. And he was like, this is a great idea. This is hilarious. What's mom doing? The, the egg acts as glue. So it dried on his face and she didn't let him wash it for like a couple minutes to learn his lesson. So I always remember that when I do this. So you will get egg white, you know, you separate the yolk. Is. You get a paintbrush because paintbrushes have a width that is very specific, okay? And you would get your glass and you'd say, wow, I only want to salt this part right here. And maybe I'm going to do this to only 50% of the cocktail rim because someone may or may not like a salted rim. And that's, you know, that's in practice in bartending, but also it shows in a photo shoot that you didn't fully commit the person to drinking exactly what you wanted to do. And so as this dries, we will roll it in, thank you, sugar pie, tahin or salt. I want tahin because I want you to see what it is. It could be sugar for styling purposes. We're going to get like a fatter part because this is a common class and it doesn't roll as well. That's good. Here you go. All right. Knock it a couple times, the loose ones. And you continue rimming until you get the exact rim that you want. Um, you can also dollop around the bald spots. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, like we didn't get any right here. Cool. Boom, we got it. Dealing with citrus on set is a pain. Um, usually there's a lot more people working different things, so you as a stylist have to be ready at all times. So egg white. Good for that. What else is egg white good for? Let's get into foams, okay? Here we have, um, here we have pineapple juice. So pineapple juice really froths up really well. So let's try that. Samantha's gonna make a cocktail with part pineapple juice, and we're gonna we're gonna garnish it with the mint. But for the future, if you needed a color. Uh, okay. colored foam. Colds. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, in the future, if you need a foam to hold and the foam is yellow or you wanted to color it, maybe put some grenadine in just a little bit of pineapple juice and shake it up. So we're dry shaking right now. I have no ice in here. That creates, oh, okay, I'm scary. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that. <laughs> um, so I would suggest dry shaking if you're on a photo shoot. That will create a bigger foam versus wet shaking, which is when there's ice in here. So it's gonna so sound nice. like I'm doing nothing, but it, it, it'll, it'll work. It's a sound for sure. Um, the other thing you could do is shake with egg white, like reverse shake with egg white, and that'll also create a foam. Egg white doesn't have a color, so you can, you can color, yeah, this is fine. You can color anything you want. If you wanted red foam, if you wanted all kinds of foam, whatever you want. So she's frothy. Yeah, she's frothy. And then you just spoon it out with a bar spoon wherever you need it to be. Yeah, this, this is really easy to take out, obviously, with a bigger lip on a cup. But yeah. you can take this out, spoon this on to yeah, an espresso martini. Um, anything that you would, re I mean, a sour, a New York sour, anything that would have foam, you can spoon this on to. And it'll, it'll last for a pretty long time, pineapple is a really good way to froth things. And if you do a citrus zest onto foam, it kind of coats it as well. Correct. Yeah. So what the hell's a zest? Well, we're running out of time, but let's just jump into citrus real quick. Citrus is a, its own miracle. Um, and these are, these are lemons, these are oranges, these are limes. But for food photography, we want to look for citrus that has big pores. Big pores are going to make for a thicker skin, thicker pith, and it's going to hold up real well. Um, in bartending, you would want to roll this to mix the sugars and do gastronomic things. But basically, I'm going to let you peel that, and I'm going to go thinking of ways to close this out. Sure, I give a peeler. 
No, I have a knife. Oh. Let me cut myself. Perfect. I got you. Um, so <laughs> I'll go do it. the reason bartenders will do this, sometimes when you can feel something is not the consistency you want it, there, I know that there's not going to be a lot of oils in here if it's really tough. So I'm rolling and what's that? Not on the board while he's cutting with a knife. But in theory, what I'm doing is I'm bringing the oils to the surface with all of these pores here. I'm going to express the oils out of the peel and I need the big pores and I need oil to be in there. So all right. He's close. He's close. Got carried All away. Right. There you go. So this is a really big feel. Yeah, it is. Very intense. Um, what we can do to show two different things is we're going to split this guy. The edge of this knife was dropped, so it's not straight. Perfect. That's what I always want to hear with the blade. Yeah. Um, so what I have here is the peel. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but if I express it, if you see all those no, we can't see. You anything. can't see them. Oh, if they're on top of the ice cube. What's going to happen is all these oils are going to sit on top. You would want this for a martini, things like that. But peels, what we would want to do with them, you want, I mean, a peeler is going to give you a little less pick, but now we have the option to oh, yeah. create a wheel. We can, and a smaller guy, we could create a twist. Now, if we need something to stay for, say I wanted a twist to sit perfectly on a martini glass, we can use egg white Yeah. on the peel. We twist it. We can set it with say something like a toothpick. I can wrap it around a straw. I could wrap it around a tweezer, anything that has the consistency or the thickness of the twist that I like. Let it sit. The egg white's going to stabilize it and hold it. And then it's going to basically be a frozen in time peel that I can now put. And you can peel an orange for an old fashioned. You can put this on basically yeah. anything. I like to get the ink of a pen and then twist my peel around it. And so if there's nothing there, you risk the peel breaking the skin. But if you twist it around the ink, it won't. And then I like to pull it and stretch it. And now you have a beautiful, curvy little thing right there. Now, we have two minutes. If you like, questions? we've exhausted it all. We can we can actually go over time with the questions. But um, let me just talk a little bit more about food styling and, and drink styling. Um, it is absolutely necessary. Uh, you can be the best photographer in the world, but if your subject is not that great then you it's just a really good picture of a really mediocre subject and i'm learning this more and more as my career careens out of control no. <laughs> uh, but really it's so important so i find myself styling my own shoots i always ask for bartenders or chefs on site to style for me i give them pointers i always roll with tongs and um, turkey basters and funnels now and I just want the best end product. My product is images and I have to make sure everything on there is good. I don't have any uh, reservations about telling a bartender that might not know what they're doing, how to do it well, or at least for my photos, how to do it and they can carry on with their bad habits or if they're if someone who listens, great for us. Um, but it's really important that your drinks not only look good and look fresh and look delicious, but that you're doing it right, specifically for the brands trying to sell the booze, okay? It's not good enough that it looks good. It's supposed to be correct, okay? Because we're dealing with civilized, sophisticated people, and that's what brands want to sell to. And ultimately, we get work from brands. We don't, we, we as photographers don't shoot for the actual end user of the cocktails and drinks. So with that, we finish our class and we are absolutely open to questions as we peel this pineapple uh, top. Oh, did we make that pineapple cocktail or no? Uh, we should, what do you know what those are called? These are pineapple fronds. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I got yes, it. I'm sure they're called fronds. These can also be brought back to life, not that anyone asked, but um, you can walk these into ice water for about three to five minutes, pull them back out, and all the dead ones that are kind of floppy will come back to life and you can use them in cocktails. This is the 2021 man button. 
Oh, not right now. Very good. Um, there were two questions. I see two Q and yes. A. Two Q and A questions. So uh, let's jump into those. First of all, thank you, Anthony, uh, for for doing this. Always always a great time having you. Always a lot of fun. Although I will I will tell you uh, begrud begrudgingly now I want a Negroni. So <laughs> so thanks thanks for that. I appreciate it. I know I know what I'm having with dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Vanessa wanted to know, um, going back to when you were creating, uh, you know, the drink with the, the bullet or boule, however you want to pronounce it. I know, I know people get really touchy about this, so we'll just go with bullet, bullet, um, <laughs> get into fights all the time with people about that. But, uh, if you don't have the product handy, you know, what do you do? Is, is the product always going to be handy? Do they always have it on set so that you can kind of gauge that and figure that out? Yeah, so uh, I've said this in a previous class. Most brands will not let you um, shoot with anything other than their own product. But for example, if we're shooting for a modifier like St. Germain and we don't have a whiskey, we make it out of soy sauce and we use it. But if you're working with the brand Bullet Rye, they're gonna, they're gonna want you to use their product and their lawyers insist that you use their product for color, for viscosity, for all the things. Um, you would ask the client to bring several bottles that are perfect for bottle photos, and you would ask the client to bring several more to make the cocktails with the actual product. These are not the same bottles, although originally, you know, they're all for drinking. Um, you separate those and you polish up those bottles Woo! like a newborn baby um, and you don't get any fingerprints and just like just like glassware we would hold the top only and hold it like this and put it down like that um, or with gloves um, we also sometimes shave the back label off of the, the booze so let's say this is bullet Ryan we're shooting I would cut the label maybe right here and peel the back off so that we can see through the entire glass. And of course, this is the case by case basis. I forgot the beer. Um, the case by case basis, of course, um, every bottle is different. And to do that, you just submerge the back of the bottle only into um, a, a hot water bath. So this would be the bottle. You get a plate that, and, and to a water level that supports only wetting the back label and then keep it there for a while marinating and then just peel it off with the knife and take the rest of it off um, with the knife or, or acetone or whatever will get the glass clean. Okay. So that's, that should answer that question. And since we didn't get into the beer segment, sorry, I'm just going to stuff this in there. Uh, this is beer. Okay. And beer dies after the first pour right and if you want to bring it back to life you can get a straw or something and you know you'll see a lot of servers do this to bring it back to life just swish it a little bit but there's only so many times you can do this before this stops working because you get all the carbonation out of it right so what i like to do actually that was wood is get a wooden chopstick and the enzymes and wooden chopsticks will absolutely bring this back to life in, a, in an incredible way. Look at that. That was a lot. And we can overdo it and the thing just goes overboard. And we have as much foam as we want from the wood enzymes in a chopstick or wood that doesn't have a finish. Um, the other trick I have for this, and this will be my last, is some salt. Let's put some salt in the beer. Let the salt get to the bottom and the salt will naturally make it a rainbow gin fizz. And agitates it. And agitates it. But with salt, it's always coming from the bottom up. So you need to make sure you know about that. But that's how to keep your beer foamy and delicious and whatever. Sorry. Looks delicious. Looks delicious. No, no, no. Salty, woody beer. beer. Let's do it. <laughs> no, that's it. Listen, we got we got wine. We got the hard liquor. We got to get we got to get the beer in there too. We can't we can't leave the beer out. You know, we don't want yeah. it on the side feeling bad. <laughs> oh, no bad feelings. 
Um, uh, so, so Amelie wanted to know, going back to using the funnel, when, when you're on set and you're styling, are you using the funnel yourself or do you have somebody else who's, you know, say a bartender on set with you who's actually going to be using the funnel? If I don't have a stylist, I'm, I'm asking the bartender to use a funnel. Some bartenders, uh, their, their experience and fame goes to their head and they're like, I'm not using a funnel. And that's why I say, okay, then you're not pouring the drinks because I'm not, I'm not getting a dirty glass because of your ego. Uh, but that's how to cure that. Everyone else is super. <laughs> they use funnels. Funnels are dope. Funnels look ridiculous, but they, yeah, they, yeah, they just save time, you know, just save a lot of time. All these tools have, you know, uh, purposes. They make our lives easier. They make cocktails look better. Um, don't drink anything on set without asking absolutely everyone if it's okay to drink because some drinks are real and some drinks have to be real and some drinks are not, but you don't want to find out the hard way and like swallow a piece of silicone. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Then then you might be then you might be headed to a to a hospital trip. <laughs> exactly. And uh, then we get to hospital possibly. photography. <laughs> so one last question to kind of wrap things up here you know going back to so we we kind of covered this in the beginning and you covered you know not getting any fingerprints and how to kind of navigate that when you've already got the drink poured now when you're taking into account something like you know a margarita or something like that you know use the example of tahin which you know if anybody out there hasn't had tahin you obviously haven't been in the new york city subway station at all getting you know like some mango or anything like that but you should check it out it's good i recommend 10 out of 10 right but <laughs> but you know when you're when you're using that to garnish your glass and you're kind of circulating around is it for this obviously you didn't do it but are am, uh, am i correct in assuming that you're going to have gloves on when you're doing that or or do you first do it and then wipe it down no for sure gloves for sure gloves so here's here's the dilemma with rimmed glasses and people spraying frosty frosty spray on their stuff like which one comes first what do i tape off first do i tape off the top and then frost it and then i'm going to touch the glass and and rim the top or the reverse so yeah we rim it with the glass we do the rim first and then we add the ice and then we add the liquid and if we need to add the foam and then at the end we would garnish it and then shoot it and then have an exact replica of what we're shooting ready to go without the liquid in it just in case someone drops this someone by mistake touches the rim of it messes it up the garnish dies whatever it is so we can have this smooth running machine all day long and pumping out great cocktail photography so that we are more efficient and at the end of the day more effective in our photography which makes clients happy and which makes them call us back for even more work which is how we pay bills and stay alive there you go bingo you heard it here first that's how you make money and pay your bills and stay alive so uh, i want to give you both a huge thanks for being here um, you know, Anthony, a resident over here, always, always doing a wonderful job and, and bringing the people the information that they want um, and, and having a good time while doing it. So we appreciate you uh, for being here again. I'm sure that this is not the last time we'll see you. Um, you know, one thing I got to say that you didn't let people know is where can where can they find more of your work? Oh, yeah. I forgot about myself. I'm so <laughs> humble. <laughs> Uh, you know, South Beach, if you come down here, you, you catch me riding bike in short shorts and getting a sweet tan. No, um, Instagram is, is where I live. It is. <laughs> uh, 52 Chefs on Instagram. I've got a website I need to update, but you can catch me there too. Uh, my email is up there, but I, I mostly function on Instagram, uh, which I'm transitioning out of because social media is change often but for now 52 chefs but in the very near future just go to my website and that will be my latest and greatest work because as someone uh, transitioning into commercial photography um instagram is kind of looked at like all the other photographers do that or all the you know like the amateur photographers do that and real photographers have real websites 
and they pump out of there. So that's what we're doing. But we started out as a photographer for the people and the people were and still are on Instagram. But now we're doing commercial stuff like teaching cocktail photography and shooting for big brands. And we're doing all and like I like photographing people at bars, too. But, you know, daddy wants to be a millionaire. And that's it. We got bills to pay. Yeah. We yeah, want big bills to pay. Bills. That's right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you heard it here, folks. Catch him on the re-up. Follow him along, 52 Chefs on Instagram. Check out the website. And, you know, I'm sure that you could check him out again in the future on the b &H event space. And you can catch all of the stuff that Anthony's done if you go to our live stream page, livestream.com slash BH event space. Ton of great content that he's worked with us on. And we really appreciate it. As always, for everybody at home, we appreciate you being here and spending the last hour with us. Hopefully this was fun for you as well. Uh, this has been another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time. Hi, guys. We're all in black. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys.